Hey, welcome to Jay Studio um, with uh, a, an update, uh, kind of long coming uh, for my Thinker SE, uh, which has been kind of under the surgical knife for about a month. So um, this is the printer that uh, has, I was running on Clipper before, I uh, started having some issues really I think with the, the fact that Clipper kind of overruns the capabilities of the stock Area 1 hot end and extruder. Just don't think they can keep up. Um, and I uh, just too many problems. Uh, eventually I thought, you know what, um, we're going to do like a wholesale upgrade and then kind of move from there. So, um, this is literally the first print and it's going to be a pressure advanced tuning print. Uh, I'll explain a little bit more in just a second. Um, uh, but, uh, the first print after getting everything wired up, I do still plan on making a series of videos on Clipper for the ordinary user. That's not a Linux programmer or uh, somebody who's super technically savvy because this has definitely been a journey. I'll tell you in advance that uh, it is not for the faint-hearted and even though the guides out there there's lots of documentation with regards to the Clipper documentation as well as different routines etc etc the bottom line is that these are programmers writing these things so even though they think they're making a step-by-step -step guide for stuff they will say something as part of a step that most of us have no clue what they're talking about. And that's what makes this so frustrating uh, to try to get things uh, put together. So my hope is is to do a set of videos that hopefully you all will comment on. We can develop a, a bit of a discussion and maybe clarify for future users and future searchers uh, some of, clarify some of the issues getting things to work. And I'm not out of the woods yet. Uh, but I did want to make a quick video to at least show you that, yes, the, 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 the Thinker SE on Clipper with upgraded hot end, extruder, um, and, you know, stepper motors. There's a bunch that I've done, uh, not to mention the LED lighting, um, both on the hot end and up at the top of the gantry. Um, and just some real quick, uh, I won't talk too deep in detail about anything right now, but uh, there's the Bontech LGX extruder, which is working like a champ. I will tell you, I had massive issues with this because Bontech does not clarify the fact that you're going to need to swap two wires on your standard uh, your standard uh, wire harness uh, to be able to use it. So more on that later. Um, the hot end is an E3D V6. It's the gold edition. I decided to go splurge and go with their top of the line. Um, and uh, obviously all Capricorn tubing going into uh, this. And uh, I also used the Triangle Labs 3D Touch as the uh, sensor, which is directly in front of the nozzle, so there's no X offset. Um, and I swapped both fans to, you know, all the fan outputs to 24 volts, so fans are going to town. That's the noise that you hear. Um, that blower fan is a little bit noisy, but I've got it at 90%. It blows a ton of air. I think it's going to be plenty of cooling. I might actually reduce it to 85 or 80 and that might actually be the best place to uh, be. Um, and then the, the carriage for this E3D uh, was designed by uh, Dana Olson, who's a user over at the Area One Facebook group, and he's got several Clipper videos and other videos here on YouTube. You should check him out. He is a technically savvy individual, um, and uh, I'm sure he gets a little bit frustrated with all my questions, but um, I think my questions are illuminating areas that are not made clear and not fully developed in the documentation for Clipper. And if we want Clipper to become more of a mainstream firmware with some more resources and better development, uh, we need to get beyond uh, only Linux programmers understanding what the heck's going on with it. So uh, there you have it. Um, that's the carriage anyway that he printed, really nice. And then I took a couple of different, my fan duct is a different one because I wanted a fan duct with an LED light mount um, and things like that. I'm uh, pretty proud of my uh, wire looming. Everything's nice and clean uh, and set up appropriately. And then you'll see them uh, from time to time. The bed's going to cover them every now and then, but I am now running 2209 stepper motors from Area 1 instead of the 2208. And they are much quieter. In fact, the noise that this printer makes is really the fan noise. So uh, there you go. Other, uh, not necessarily upgrades, but like changes, is I took the uh, the Pi camera off of the frame mount, and it's just on a standalone mount right now uh, as a monitor cam for the printer. 
Uh, I already mentioned the LED lighting. You can see it underneath the hot end and up in the gantry. Uh, pretty bright and should give me some good visibility on what's going on on the print bed. Uh, last but not least, uh, certainly uh, happy to get the frosted PEI surface on here. Um, even though it's 300 by 300, it doesn't completely uh, cover the bed. Uh, something that I've noticed that on several of these that I've ordered. So uh, in the future, if I order replacements, I'll actually order something bigger than my bed so that it actually covers it. So even though this is technically a 300 by 300 print volume printer, the bed itself is easily 3, oh, I don't know, 308 by 30, or maybe 306 by 306. Um, and uh, if we were to be able to get a PEI sheet and magnetic uh, applique that actually covered the white, it would actually, I think, both look better as well as give uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit better functionality, especially with things like prime lines and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, this has rambled on enough uh, just to, to kind of show you where we are right now. I've decided to, although I will mention a bit about the tuning. So um, I, I said I wasn't out of the woods. I, I cannot make the accelerometer uh, work with um, this, the Raspberry Pi and Clipper and this printer. Um, I'm wondering whether my whether or not my accelerometer actually has a problem uh, that I the one that I bought because the errors that I'm getting um, can indicate that it's a bad accelerometer. Uh, that has been a very frustrating process. Uh, Clipper's documentation on how to do a secondary MCU may seem clear, but what's not clear is how you actually have to do startup routines and edit printer.config such that you can actually have your printer run both, or I'm sorry, your Pi run both your printer um, and also run your, um, uh, use the Pi as a secondary MCU to be able to run the accelerometer. That was freaking painful. Um, and I'm still not out of the woods, like I said, because I got it supposedly all running, but now it won't query the accelerometer and says there's an error um, with uh, finding the accelerometer. Um, yeah, whatever. So what I've done um, is for now, I'm just running input shaper on the values that I had before I did these upgrades. So they won't be correct, uh, but they won't be completely off, out to lunch either since the printer uh, frame and things are pretty much the same. Uh, so I'm going to run input shaper that way. So I've decided to start my tuning with PA. Uh, I will get the pressure advance tuned on this system. Um, and then I'm going to do some retraction tuning uh, because I can tell already that I'm going to need to like, oh, do a little bit more, probably a little bit more retraction over a little bit higher speed. But with this all metal hot end, I just want to make sure I'm not yanking uh, too much or yanking the, or some of the filament back into out of the uh, the all metal uh, heat throat, which is a very short heat throat. I don't want to pull that back because it's very prone to clogging on all metal hot ends uh, if you use too much retraction. So this is where I am right now. We'll figure out a good PA or a pressure advance uh, for this length Bowden tube, which is pretty long, um, and uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, I also will refine my flow uh, settings. Um, obviously, this is my first time with this extruder. Um, they give you a rotation distance for clipper, but I think I'm going to need to refine it. And uh, we'll go from there. So I'll check back in with a little once we get a few more things tuned in. Um, and hopefully I can get another accelerometer here uh, before too, too long and actually do the accelera uh, acceleration measurements for both the X and Y axis to get input shaper truly working appropriately. Take care. Happy 3D printing. Uh, and more to come on Clipper and Area 1 printers.